What's going on guys, Bob Busker here at Think Computers. I'm gonna be showing you the UEFI BIOS here on the Gigabyte Z170N Gaming 5 motherboard. Now this BIOS should be pretty much the same across the board when it comes to Gigabyte's Z170 line. You might see a different skin or something like that depending on the series of the motherboard, but it should be pretty much the same across the board. Now one thing that I've liked is that Gigabyte has got rid of that HD BIOS in that weird um, sort of shortcut BIOS that they had before. Strictly UFI, UEFI BIOS, graphical interface, really easy to use, um, so we're just gonna go through it. So the first thing is that when you go into the BIOS, you're gonna go into the MIT, and on the main screen here, it's gonna show you information about your system. BIOS version, uh, CPU frequency, memory frequency, all that kind of stuff. But we'll go into the current status, and this is more of a detailed view on your processor as well as your memory. So you can see all of our memory timings here. We can go ahead and see all of our you know, turbo frequency and non-turbo frequency for our CPU. We can see a CPU core temperature. So it's everything to do with your CPU and memory right here. So it's really easy to see all of that. Advanced frequency settings is of course where you can change all that stuff with your processor. So we have everything set to auto, but of course you can change the CPU clock ratio if you want to overclock, you can do different things. You can also set the system memory multiplier in here if you want, um, and you can also set XMP mode. We have memory that doesn't use XMP, but if we did, we could set it in here as well. If we go to advanced CPU core settings, you know you can turn certain things off. If you don't want Intel Turbo Boost on, you can go ahead and turn it off. Um, you can set your power limits. You can do a lot of different things um, with this. So you have all of those options in here. Go out of there and advanced, advanced memory settings allows you to go ahead again, set your memory multiplier or turn on XMP. You can um, actually go ahead and change all of your timings. So you can see as I go through this, we can, you can, there's a lot of timings that you can change. You can really go down and change the timings if you want. Of course, if you're doing XMP, you don't have to worry about any of these timings. Go out of there and we'll go into advanced voltage settings and there's different power settings. So advanced power settings is just your load line calibrations. Again, we have those set to auto. We'll go to CPU core voltage. That's all the voltages to do with the CPU. So CPU core, uh, C CPU graphics voltage, all that kind of stuff that you can go ahead and set. Chipset voltage control, of course, is the PCH, so you can set the voltage there. DRAM voltage control, so if you're overclocking your memory, you can go ahead and change your voltage here. And internal VR control, you have all different controls for different things to do with voltage on there. So I like that everything in this is just organized between chipset, CPU, all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to go down through a million different voltage settings just to find the one that you want. I like that. And PC health status, that is going to give you a real-time view of all of your voltages, your temperatures, your fan speeds, and all of that. And you can actually go ahead here and you can set um, your fan speed controls. You can set up warnings as well. So say your CPU fan dies or something like that, you'll get a warning or the system will shut down. You can do that with CPU temperature as well. You can set all that kind of stuff up so your system, or so you don't ruin anything inside your system. Miscellaneous is just some couple settings, 3D Mark 01 enhancement and max link speed that you can set. So we'll go out of there and we'll go to system information. And this is more information on your motherboard and your BIOS. So just, it gives us the, our motherboard name and our BIOS, BIOS date, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we're running in English as you can see here. We'll go over to BIOS features, and this is sort of like the main things that you might wanna set up. Um, obviously the big one is setting up your boot option priority, so just set the actual boot drive that you want so you can easily install Windows um, or you know different things like that. Here you can also set up a user password as well as an administrator password. We'll go over to peripherals, and here you have different things that you can set up. Um, you can obviously turn on you know, things like USB mass storage, driver support, uh, legacy USB support, all that kind of stuff that you can you know, change. The audio LED that's on the board, um, you can change it to beat mode, which will go to the beat of the music, and you can change it to pulse mode, which will just pulse on and off, or you can turn it off. Now, you'll actually have the ability to do this within software as well, but you have the ability to do it in the BIOS too, so you can go ahead and do that. 
Now, of course, you can turn onboard land on and off, things like that. Um, you'll have your BIOS guard technology, your uh, offboard SATA controller configuration, SATA configuration, and NVMe configuration. So if you have any of those drives and they need to be set up in a specific way, you can do that all through these different settings. And we'll go over to chipsets here, and there's just a couple things. Um, if you're going to be using the internal graphics, you will need to turn those on. Um, they're auto right now, so it detects that we have a graphics card, so it's not going to turn it on. Obviously, the auto audio controller, we have enabled. The DSP, we don't, but you can turn it on. Um, so different things like that that you might want to turn on. If we go over to power management, um, just some different power things. You know, power on by mouse, re resume by alarm, things like that. Um, you know, power on by keyboard, you can set all that kind of stuff up. And then finally, we have our save and exit here. Um, and one thing that they do have is the boot override, which is nice because if you're going to be installing your OS from a flash drive, which I assume a lot of people are these days, you can easily set the boot override so it just boots from the flash drive once and you start that Windows installation so you don't have to go back. You know, you set it to your, you set the boot priority to your flash drive, and then you have to go back when you restart and go into the BIOS. This way, you can just boot from it once and go in and change it. Same thing if you're, you know, if you're having issues with something and you need to boot from a, a different device only once. This just makes it really easy. We can obviously load our optimized defaults, um, and you can save and load profiles. One other thing that's in the BIOS that is pretty cool is you do have your Q flash, which allows you to easily flash the BIOS. Um, and you can update the BIOS from drive. You can save it. You can save it as well. So if you have a BIOS that you have certain settings on, you want to save it to a flash drive, or you're working with two of the same boards, um, and you have you know BIOS that you want to switch between, you can easily do it with this as well. Um, and I think that let me change some settings real quick because I think it actually lets you know when you change. Let's uh, let's just say. Oops, uh, what am I doing? So we'll change this to 41. And then we'll hit F10 to save. Let's see. I guess it doesn't tell you my doesn't tell you the changes that you made. It would have been nice that it that it did, but I th I thought it did, but I guess it doesn't tell you the changes that you made. But still, um, very easy to use BIOS. Uh, works really well. Haven't had any issues with it. Very responsive. Everything that you need can be found easily within one or two menus, which is a huge deal because there, there's always a ton of settings within a BIOS and finding them easily, is, of course, is a plus. So you have all that. Uh, very easy to use. It's I don't see a favorites menu, which would have been nice as well. But again, everything is like one or two menus away, so it's not a huge deal. But just a good, easy to use BIOS. If you have any questions about this BIOS or any Gigabyte Z170 BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Until next time, catch you guys later. Thank you.